Okay, next phase on this. So we got, let's just do a little quick recap. We come in, wrap around, fit, fit. Okay, common deficiency when people shoot um, is support and slippage. So let's show in the, the video here. I'll just go left hand here. So you can see right here is the support hand, you know, boom, 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 may slip and this gap opens up. So shot one looks like this, shot five, six, seven can be way down here, okay? Another common deficiency is the thumbs get in play and push the support hand off. Either way, what shot one doesn't look like shot and, you know, shot uh, five or six, okay? Okay, so to help um, keep the support hand in place, chest squeeze, chest squeeze. Credit where credit's due, learned this from Rodney May. Quick side note too, you know, some of these tips I've learned, the mind's like a parachute, works when it's open, all right? Um, I wouldn't have grown as a shooter if I would have been closed-minded and thought, well, I just beat you in the match, or I'm shooting better than you, so I'm not gonna listen to you. Like, no, 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 the mind's like a parachute, works when it's open. So, so listening to some of these points and trying to implement them and really understand the fundamentals and the, and the core concepts behind them, so helpful, so helpful, so helpful. So uh, that's why I just really suggest is try them out and bet them out for yourself. Make sure some of these concepts work like chest squeeze and C-clamp and see if you get a performance gain. Maybe, maybe you have a performance dip, but, but give it some time to see if it ultimately sends you, you personally on a performance gain. Okay, quick, quick uh, uh, public service announcement there. Okay, so chest squeeze. So here's the trick on chest squeeze. And again, what credit's due, Rodney May taught me this. And, and his, his memory hook for chest squeeze was like, well, the, the gun's gonna try to split your hand, so you gotta squeeze the thumbs together. And in my mind, it didn't, that didn't do much for me because I thought, well, your thumb's there, it's not really gonna split your hand. But, but I, see what, I see what he meant by that. Like, you gotta have that sense like it's gonna split your hand, so you gotta squeeze the pliable thumbs together to create that consistent bedding on these rear quarter flanks and rear portion to return the muzzle down to a consistent location and to mitigate flinch. All right, all right, all right, a lot to unpack there. So the key there is pliable thumbs. Um, because here's the deal. Remember I talked about the objectives of grip and I said we want to be uncalibrated. We want to have the ability to return the muzzle down when we're unwarmed up and in any mental state. If we try to apply force in this base upper quarter flank region of the pistol with the small muscles of our thumbs and our hands, kind of like I'm showing right here, <laughs> we just turn the thousand mile journey into a 10,000 mile journey. Meaning, and I've been down this road, um, trying to hit, you know, control pairs 20 yards and a you know, USPSA target, you know, really, really training, 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 trying all these like real micro little movements through here. You know, you can see just to, 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 to make that happen. That wasn't a thousand mile journey. That was a 10,000 mile journey, maybe even more, all right? Too much, too much, too much on foot. Better approach is to have pliable thumbs, okay, pliable thumbs, and that feeling of, of compression, that pre-engagement, which we desire to have on the grip of the pistol, comes from our chest squeeze, all right? As you know in the course, I'll, uh, I'll take liberties to go around and just, just you know, ask for permission, but, but touch the upper pec and sometimes the delts right here, just to make sure that uh, the students are squeezing the chest, all right? They are indeed squeezing that chest, creating that firm bedding. I'll also sometimes just peel around and make sure that the thumbs are pliable. Sometimes I'll peel around and put my hand here just to make sure that their thumbs are pliable and they're not doing this weird like push down, like because a common deficiency is to push, do this kind of action with your thumbs. We want to have that pre-engagement, like I'll talk about here in, a, in the next few videos, but that, that pre-engagement comes from pliable thumbs that are squished together by our chest. It creates an incredibly consistent bedding which will return the muzzle down shot after shot after shot. Because support and slippage, what happens there is as you go boom, 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 um, this right here, imagine this is like a little you know, light car, like a Fiat, and this is just a speed bump, it'll just kind of go over it, right? Well, if you have a 10 ton truck with all this pressure on this rear quarter flank area, or really it's not even a quarter flank, it's like probably an eighth of, an, you know, of, a, of, a, of, the, of the curvature, it's pressed in there, it's just gonna stay in place. All right, it's gonna help you align the muzzle. Believe it or not, this curvature right here helps with that first objective of grip to align the muzzle. Uh, if you have narrower um, pistols, like our cert pocket pistol that is you know, representative of some of the, the narrower frame guns, hard to point shoot those, really hard to index shoot. I've, I've tried to just have a regimen where every day I'd try to increase my point shooting and it wasn't really happening. My theory is that this curvature right here 
engages the support hand. So the support hand, believe it or not, aids in that first objective of grip of aligning the pistol to build your natural point of aim. The support hand also, when it's pressed in there with your chest squeeze, helps return the muzzle down to a consistent location. Some hands are too big. Most female hands are, are small enough, and probably about 80% of you know, male hands, just in stature, um, are, are, are small enough to where the support hand has engagement here. But there are some that have such big mitts and they get around there, they're, all the recoil is through their strong hand. It's not a big deal, it's just the way they're built, right? That's why we've got to be flexible with some of these rules um, and have to be adaptable to the student's physiology. So that just basically means they're big, it's, everything's going to go through their, their, their strong hand, all right? But that's, I find, the minority, all right? Most people can get a little bit of purchase with their support hand in that rear quarter flank area.